You've been in the job uh, for a couple of months, uh, the new president uh, and chief operating officer of, of Coca-Cola. First, uh, what a great team, what a great partner uh, since uh, Roberta Gazueta led the company. Uh, it's been involved with our organization, Meridian, and we're grateful for your partnership and support. But you must be thinking about your priorities and how you're going to take this company forward. And I know this is probably the subject of, of, of a lot of ongoing discussion, but do you have sort of a vision yet of uh, what your first challenges and priorities are in leading the company? Well, I've kind of been, so far I've been hiding behind the, uh, the old adage of you've got 100 days to come up with a plan, and I'm only on day 60. <laughs> um, but having said that, actually the first thing I had to do uh, was go and learn about a whole section of our global business that I'd only ever seen uh, in PowerPoint presentations and uh, business plan meetings and uh, by rumor and uh, corridor conversation. So I've been getting out there and, and looking at our business around the world. In the last couple of weeks, I've been in... Lagos, Nigeria, Johannesburg, Istanbul, Moscow. Um, so some pretty interesting places, and I'll be out in Asia uh, in the coming weeks. And I think, you know, just even though it's a couple of months in, what, what strikes me is how vibrant... Actually, Can I open this and actually have... Please, go. <laughs> um, you know, how vibrant the business is out there. You know, we, 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 we look at the newspapers and there really are problems in a lot of countries around the world and, and we haven't fully emerged from the global crisis. But I'm optimistic when I visit our operations on the ground. I see our people on the ground investing. I see our business partners, the Coca-Cola bottlers, building new factories. I think this week or last week we opened the 46th plant in, in China. I mean, there's a lot of investment and growth happening out there. So optimism, so, first thing. So Coca-Cola makes a point of engaging in local communities where it operates. And I think it was one of the first companies to really, to really do that. Um, it's, a, it's a recognizable brand. It's, it's an American brand, but it's also become a, a local brand. But that's because you all contribute, you give back into the communities. What are some of the things that Coca-Cola is doing that we should know about that have been effective in engaging those communities? I think it is just to underline one of our fundamental principles that there can be no healthy business without a healthy local community. Um, and we are present, as I was commenting to, to someone earlier, everywhere but Cuba and North Korea. And so we have people on the ground, and, and those people are dedicated not just to helping set up a Coke business, which in of itself helps build the community, because business creates jobs, creates wealth. Uh, and what we do is we, we engage with what are the issues of the day in the community. So, you know, in Africa, where I was last week, um, you know, in, in Kenya, we've got a program where we're trying to um, generate female entrepreneurs to set up businesses, to be distributors, part of our... Uh, trying to empower 5 million women by 2020. This is tens of thousands of new jobs being created. Or, or you go over to other parts of Africa and it's the distribution, helping the distribution of pharmaceuticals. You get out to India and it might be water. So wherever we are, we want to engage in the, in the big issues for that local community. Um, so one of the, and, and, and another important thing that we feel very strongly about in the Coca-Cola company is, um, uh, is uh, women leadership. I have, um, about a couple of years ago, created uh, something called the Women's Leadership Council, uh, simply because we have not, I, f I saw that, uh, firstly, in the Coca-Cola business, 70% of, of our consumer base is, are, is composed of, of, of women consumers. In other words, of the shoppers that buy Coca-Cola in the world, 70% are, are women because they buy not just for themselves, but for their homes. And what did I see? Out of 39 business units globally, we had only two run by women. And out of um, 300 bottling companies in the world that are tied to the Coca-Cola company, only two women presidents, one in Uruguay and one in China. And uh, that was a, 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 a terrible uh, thing that we said we're leaving behind 50% of the world and, and, and talent and actually, you know, in many cases, uh, particularly in the area of sales management, general management, women uh, are, are more effective. 
So I formed this Women's Leadership Council with the objective of not just to create women functional leaders, because in that area, we didn't do badly as a Coca-Cola company. We have head of HR, who's a lady, and head of uh, uh, research and development, and head of quality assurance. But it's general management that we were faring so poorly. Anyway, important point is the diversity, uh, one of the most uh, important diversity programs uh, I am personally involved in is this Women's Leadership Council with the objective of going from two out of 39 to many more and two out of 300 to many more. And it was interesting to note that out of the, in the bottling companies, our Chinese business had a woman president and our business in Uruguay had one, but nothing, not, not one in the United States, not one in Europe. Um, so um, I think that women's leadership uh, has never been more important than it is today. Um, so, to wrap up, um, for the Coca-Cola company, uh, execution uh, involves focusing on our three core capabilities. That's another thing that we've said very clearly, very simply. We said in the Coca-Cola company, if we are to succeed, we have to be the best in the world, not only in the consumer products area, the best in the world, in three areas. One is inspirational consumer marketing, communicating the relevance of our 300 plus brands to the consumers. Inspirational consumer marketing, pillar number one. Pillar number two, commercial leadership. How do you, the gearbox, how do you convert that cons inspirational consumer marketing to sales in the four walls of our 20 million customers globally every day. And the third is what we call, which is more related to specifically to us, franchise leadership, the third pillar, which is how we provide thought leadership to our uh, bottling community, to our universe of 300 plus bottlers. So, um, and, and for effective leadership, especially in, in these challenging times, there can be no substitute for strategic thinking and tireless and relentless execution. No alternative for attracting and retaining the best people in the world and to creating and to ensure that they have a dynamic, thriving environment and no job more important than communicating and continuing to communicate effectively with your custom, uh, consumers as well as customers. Um, a few years later, I had the opportunity uh, right up at the, f just before the fall of the Berlin Wall to lead, our, uh, lead the operations of the Coca-Cola company in 25 countries from Poland all the way to Vladivostok, Russia, all of Central and Eastern Europe. And these, these countries, um, there were about 400 million consumers who'd lived behind the Iron Curtain for uh, two or, or more generations and, um, and, um, and, and a great uh, consumer group of Slavic, uh, more than 400 Slavic uh, consumers and 400 million. And um, our business had no relevance when it was in the, during the time of communism in Eastern Europe. Uh, we were just um, token, and no one could, uh, except for foreigners who lived, uh, or diplomats who lived in Eastern Central Europe, no one could really enjoy uh, any Western products at that time. And uh, once the Berlin Wall came down, we um, built, uh, within 30 months, about 24 factories from the north of Poland all the way down to Albania. And uh, the key lessons there were urgency, 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 and focus. And focus on execution. And, and focus on keeping your eye on the prize. And forever, you know, we gained leadership in our categories of non-alcoholic beverages through those two, three years of focus. And today, again, Eastern Central Europe is one of our most uh, prized businesses globally across all those nations from Poland to Czech Republic to Hungary to Austria, uh, Russia, Ukraine, etc. Maybe not everyone in our audience actually knows your story when you first started. Picture Omaha in 1937. I was seven years old and uh, uh, no air conditioning, so the summers were hot and humid. People. Uh, went out on their lawns at night just to try and cool off. And I got the idea that maybe I could sell them what you would call soft drinks and we called pop. Uh, so I, uh, 
I went around to a bunch of gas stations, and in those days, every gas station had a cooler with varied soft drinks in it, and it had a little opener on the side and something to catch all the bottle caps. So I went around and collected all the bottle caps for weeks uh, at these various gas stations. I collected 8,000 of them. And then I sorted them all out, and I saw that they were Coca-Cola overwhelmed everybody else. Uh, so I decided to hook myself up to them. There, and <laughs> <laughs> there were these little silver-like ones in those days. And my grandfather had a grocery store, so I went to my grandfather and I said, uh, how about giving me a deal on Coke so I can sell it around the neighborhood? And then he sold me at the rate of six bottles for a quarter, and I went around and sold them for a nickel each. And I sold out every time. And uh, I had no inventory, I had no receivables, I had the best business I ever had. <laughs> 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 but I made one mistake. I didn't put the money I saved into Coca-Cola stock. <laughs> and, but I, I rectified that mistake some years later. <laughs> what excites you these days in technology, innovation, new businesses? I like this one. <laughs> I, 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 I'm the kind of guy that likes to bet on sure things, <laughs> Mutar. And, uh, uh, you know, since 1886 and, and uh, Jacob's Pharmacy, you know, you've just seen year after year after year, till now you've got 1.8 billion, you know, eight ounce servings a day around the world. And when I joined the board in 1988, I don't remember the exact figure, it was a whole lot less. And you've got fewer shares outstanding now and you've got way more <laughs> per capita, and, and you're gaining share around the world. So uh, those are the kind of businesses I like. I like, I like wonderful brands. You got to take care of them. And, uh, but if you take care of a, of a great brand, you know, it's forever. And, and uh, that, those are the businesses I like. We own 400 million shares of Coca-Cola stock, as you know. We've never sold a share. And I wouldn't think of selling a share. I, I, I think, well, in my lifetime, since 1930, real GDP per capita in the United States has gone up six for one. Think, think of that, six for one in one person's lifetime. We have not lost the secret sauce, so that's the kind of future I see ahead too. And and uh, and if that's the future, you, you want to own you want to own businesses that are going to participate in that future. And and uh, we've done that for decades now at Berkshire Hathaway, and we'll continue to do it. Could you say a, f a few words about the United States, our, how we're prepared for for meeting the challenges ahead in terms of um, economic trade policies? Trade well, deficit, tax, uh, reform. Yeah, we always have problems. But Mutar, the luckiest person on a probability basis, in my view, that's ever been born in the history of the world is the baby being born in the United States today. I mean, it, it, this country, j just think about it. In 1790, you know, we had four million people here, and there were hundreds of millions of people in the world. And we weren't smarter and we didn't even work harder than people else were necessarily, but we had a system that unleashed human potential. And that system, quality of opportunity, a rule of law, a market system, uh, has produced an abundance you can't believe. I mean, just, just look about you. Think about what this looked like 200 years ago. There wasn't anything here, basically. And, and it improved the standard of living in my lifetime, six for one. So. We, we've got the formula, and, and it hasn't been exhausted remotely. I mean, just look at what's happened in the last 15 or 20 years. We keep turning out people like Steve Jobs or you know, whomever it may be, and uh, that, that'll continue. So we'll always have problems. I mean, you know, ever since I got out of school, somebody's, I used to sell stocks, they'd always give me 10 reasons why you shouldn't buy them, and you've heard them all, all throughout your life. But the world does not belong to the pessimists, believe me. <laughs> You're selling happiness, and, and, and uh, and it's, you know, and having it at arm's length away is, is a big part of it. And, you, you know, the distribution system has been developed. It's, it's, it's the right formula, Mutar, and it just has to be carried out with, you know, with extreme diligence, enthusiasm, and every minute of the day. What are the things that you believe actually businesses need to do to continue to crack that calculus for growth? Well, what kills great businesses, if you look at, I do, I do believe in looking at history, and I, 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 and I try to, I, I like to study failure, actually, and my, my partner says, all I want to know is where I'll die, so I'll never go there, and, and we want to see what has caused businesses to go bad, and 
the biggest thing that kills them is complacency. I mean, you, you want a, a restlessness, a feeling that, you know, that, that somebody's always after you, but you're going to stay ahead of them. You, you always want to be on the move. And, and uh, uh, when you've got a great business, you know, like Coca-Cola, which is, there aren't any like Coca-Cola, but, but uh, you really, the, the danger would always be that you rest on your laurels. But I see none of that, obviously, at Coca-Cola. But that's, that, that is the key, to, to compete the same way when you've got 1.8 billion servings being sold daily as when you were selling, you know, 10 a day. And, and that restlessness, that belief that, that tomorrow is more exciting than today, you know, you just have to have it permeate the organization. I think, um, you know, what, I, what makes me optimistic about our company is what makes me optimistic about the economies in general, which is, you know, when I look at our employees, the degree of optimism and energy and passion that they're willing to invest in this business to get it to grow again, uh, the amount of uh, 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 future that they see for our company, uh, I think is actually a microcosm of what we'll eventually see in the economies. You know, uh, uh, previous speaker, the Secretary, Under Secretary, was talking about education and that growth of education, the bringing of a greater portion of the, the female talent around the world into the workforce is generating a, a growth in, in innovation, in energy, mm -hmm. in optimism, and I think that's what's going to take us forward.